Hello, I'm Anthony. Cubase 13 uh, was released this week and I've just spent today basically sorting out my project colors. Every time a new version of Cubase comes out, I like to have a review of my project and give it a new skin. It makes it feel a little bit more special. And let's face it, we spend so much of our lives staring at Cubase that you want it to look as good as possible. And it's certainly worth spending an hour or so right at the very beginning to get all of these colors sorted. There are, however, quite a few pitfalls that you can fall down, and I'm going to show you what they are today. Stuff that when you make a change, you might not realize that you're inadvertently affecting other things in the system. So without further ado, let's just dive straight in. Um, I've, I have two profiles. I have a dark and a light profile. I'll share those preferences files with my patrons and channel members. If you want to check out the links below, you'll be able to get Cubase looking um, pretty much like this. As you can see in my preferences presets, here are my two settings. I'm going to select the dark one. Nothing's changed because that's my current profile. All right, then let's get underway. Custom color scheme is probably the most important choice you'll make. Click on that little box. These colors here, and I work in hue, saturation and value. I don't tend to work in RGB. So hue is the color. This is your 360 degree color pie, basically. Saturation is the depth of that color and value is the brightness or intensity of it. The choices that you make in this box here will propagate everywhere in the system. So I'm gonna change this to just a different color. Watch these track colors. Everything changed. See that skin gets applied to so many different aspects, all of your toolbars, your background colors, but even your tracks themselves, everything gets this um, tint applied to it. For that reason, I like to set the saturation as low as possible. Now, in an ideal world, I would set it to zero, but watch what happens when I do. If I set the saturation value to, to one and say, okay, so we've got 180, 141, let's come out, go back in again, completely different values. So Cubase doesn't seem to like saving a saturation value of zero. In fact, the lowest I've found that it will happily accept the number I give it is 10. So if I set it to 180, 10, 40, let's see what we get. <laughs> okay, okay, 12, fine. Now then, one of these important kind of pitfall moments that, that uh, you might not be aware that you're changing here is the value. Have a look in this left-hand inspector panel. You see all the text is black. I'm gonna change the value to 20 and say okay. And now, text change to white and there is a crossover point depending on where you are in your color picker chart this value is going to be different for for different settings but somewhere there you go somewhere around 22 to 24 for very dark schemes you'll change from black to white so decide what color you want your text to be this is quite a dark background and all of the options in cubase range from dark to very dark there really isn't, you don't get a full choice of the entire chromatic map for reasons best known to Steinberg. So you need to decide if you want kind of light dark, in which case you can get away with dark text, or very dark, in which case you're gonna get given white text. Now I find dark text on dark controls to be really pretty unpleasant, so I do not want that. And I'm gonna make sure that wherever I have options where I'm choosing, a range of colors. I'm always going to try to make sure that my text is white. And it's so easy to take your eye off this stuff when you're setting your project colors. You might be rattling through all of these options, setting all of these things to the colors that you want, and inadvertently not realize that some text somewhere in the system has suddenly turned black. So keep an eye on it. Saturation's decided it's now going to be set to eight, whatever, value 22, and I've got my white text back again. So that's the most important overall decision to be made about the entire application. As you see, I've got 180. Oh, it's gone four now. Every time I go in, it's a different number. So 180, as low as you can get, and then some value below about 23 that's going to give you white text. Once we've got that foundation set, we can now start worrying about colors everywhere else in the program. Now, the two biggest kind of real estate areas are your project window and your editor screen. So I've got them both open now so that we can see the contrast between them. And primarily, this is the, the main difference between my dark profile and my light profile. If I flip, uh, flip between them, you'll see the, the light profile has a light project background and a few other tweaks and twiddles, 
That's the most important one. And dark is dark. This is the project area background that we're talking about here. Let's go and have a look at that value. Now, can you see that hue has been grayed out? That's basically telling you that this overall the custom color scheme decision, whatever you set that number to, it's going to propagate everywhere else throughout the application. That's why it's very important not to set your custom color scheme saturation to zero and have Cubase just randomly give you a brand new color because you'll find that that color propagates everywhere. And as you can see, this shade of gray that I've selected here, saturation is nine, still very little color in this much real estate in basically two thirds of the screen. I don't want a dominant color, particularly because I have track coloration as well. It's going to be overbearing if I have too much. Quick example of that. No thanks, not interested in that at all. The value in this box uh, is irrelevant from the text color perspective. There's no difference between high values and low values. It's literally a case of how dark do you want this thing to be. Well, I find it a little bit kind of oppressive to have it quite that dark. And so I've set it somewhere in the, there you go, it's about 40. Now I've literally only had the program installed for a couple of days, so I am likely to tweak these values over the coming weeks. And I'll make sure I provide updates to the patrons and channel members if I do. But these are very much kind of starter values. The next most important choice to make is the editor area background. So I'm dealing with the biggest spaces first. Once we've set those three options, that's really your primary application color set. So here's the editor area background. And as you can see, much, much lighter. I find that if this is too dark, I find that much less um, easy to read. Back in we go. Next, cycle regions. At the moment, I've got them both set to the same color. They don't need to be. As you can see, they're independently editable, but I'm kind of digging having the, the same cycle region color for both areas. You can see is the key and the project, and they work perfectly well in both color schemes. I've selected this particular color. Again, 180 is grayed out. You can't do anything about that, whatever you've chosen up here. The 1186 are the, the colors that I've chosen. And this is just a combination that works really nicely with the dark profile and the light profile. It doesn't make much sense to have your grid lines the same color though, because dark grid lines on a dark background is gonna be rubbish. Light grid lines on a light background is gonna be rubbish. So you do wanna flip the logic for those two. Let's move on. The ruler background, okay, this is a big one. What color am I gonna have my ruler background? Because again, it's a single color. The ruler background is common to both of these editors. So I need to choose some sort of shade that gonna, that's gonna work in both of these contexts. And the, uh, the SV values six and 31 that I've chosen here, you can see it's actually darker than both areas, but I think it works quite well. Now then, remember what I said about text? If you have text in the area that you're colorizing and there's text in the ruler, make sure you've chosen the correct V value. Let's see what value we have to set this to in order to get the text to turn black. And I don't know the answer, so let's just find out what it is. There it is. So now I'll do some sort of binary chop on this to find the exact value where they, where they toggle. This value here is completely different to the custom color scheme. I don't know what the logic is between the text changing colors, but as you can see, here we've got my white text back. I'm just gonna reload my main profile so I can have some sort of consistency. I'm not gonna go through all of the various cycle options, but active cycle is probably the most important of the four. This is the color that's shown in the toolbar. So if I choose active cycle and change this value, then you'll see it's basically changed in both of these areas. Once again, I've maintained this kind of teal feeling. Now, this value is decoupled from your custom color, custom color scheme. Can you see that H isn't grayed out? So you can actually choose whatever you want, but I've decided to stick with the, the kind of the 180 concept. What's my actual, what's my actual color? 189 is in the ballpark. I wonder what it is if I set it to exactly 180. I might stick with that now that I've done it. That's kind of a little bit more consistent, isn't it? I must admit, I don't know. If I make this darker, will my text go white? I honestly don't know. Yes, it does. Okay, so there you go. Now that I've discovered that, my OCD might not let me have black text inside the cycle if I've got white text elsewhere. 
I don't know. I'm going to have to have a think about that one. I've just discovered a new thing. Project Colour Archaeology in front of your eyes. OK, let's move on. The rest of the sections in the user interface area aren't particularly interesting. All of these default colours, you can kind of leave them as they are. When I create new tracks, basically Cubase, if you create an instrument track, it's going to assign it to this colour. There is a little bit of tie-in to my project colour setup. I'll show you that a little bit later, but it's not the end of the world. And then we move on to mixed consoles. So let's have a chat about mixed consoles. Close this down and open my mixed console. When you're choosing your project colours, all of the stuff that you do, make sure it works with the mixed console as well, because it has slightly different rules from the project view in Cubase. Can you see that the text is white on the track list and black in the mixer? I don't know how to change that. If you do, please drop a comment uh, in the comments below. I would love to know why this text here in the track is, is white and the text in the mixer is, is black. Makes no sense to me. So now that we've got the mixer open, let's have a look at our mixer console options. There are lots of them, but most of them are fairly uninteresting. I'll just make sure you can, yeah, you can see this text. User interface, mix console, fader colors. You can actually set the individual fader colors for each of your faders. As you can see, I dislike that. I actively dislike having colored controls on the faders themselves. I just want everything to be silver. And so this color that I've chosen here, 20463, is the color that you see right the way across the mixer. Something else that I've not been um, able to unearth is how to change the background color of these mixer sections, the fader sections down below. That is too dark for me. I can't see those numbers and that's not usable and I don't know how to change it. Again, if you do, let me know. But these are configuration options I can't find anywhere in Cubase to actually make those numbers more visible. Most of these colors I don't particularly care about, quite frankly. The ones I do care about are my inserts color, which is here. And then similarly with sends, the vast majority of the time your sends are post fader. You can just see one poking out there. There's a little brick wall limiter. So that's this color here. So I do set those and they are kind of explicitly my choice. And once again, the inserts color kind of follows this general teal line. You can set it to whatever you want. That's just my preference. You have inserts on mixer channels more than anything else. It's the, the dominant color, as you can quite clearly see in this very, very simple mixer that we've got here. I don't currently have the channel strip configured in this mixer, so we'll jump over that. This section, however, is important. Let's have a look at these options. The option at the top, just leave it. Use tracks default color. Yes, I've spent all of this time selecting my track colors. Yes, I want you to use them, please. Don't do something else. There's other right, super random things that you can choose. These two um, slider options are, are pretty important though. The selection brightness matters because of your track list. You see this track over here that's selected, it says C beams. Keep an eye on that if I set the brightness to maximum. Yeah, that's not great, is it? We don't want that. And too dark makes it look like it's not selected. So you want to get that to the point where you can comfortably read the text. That's okay but it still looks very obviously selected. I would love to set brightness to 100% and be able to have my track text black, but I can't. Then these three options below, you decide whether or not you want the track itself to be colored. So you're gonna make this decision for tracks. They all just disappeared. Folder tracks have their own option for some reason, I'm not sure why. Mix console channels are your mixer itself. So if I disable these, the coloration of the faders themselves, of the channel strips, I'm sorry, will, uh, will disappear. And as you can see, that's a, a lot less, a lot less usable in my opinion. Let's bring it back again. And then the color strength, which looks like it only applies to mixed console because it's really close to this command. It's actually all three checkboxes. You determine the saturation of anything that you have colorized. So if I click apply, see everything just got darker. And so I set that to maximum color strength. I've personally selected all of the colors of all of the tracks. I want to get as close to those colors as Cubase will let me. In fact, this that I'm currently circling with my mouse, that's the color of an instrument track as far as I'm concerned. And this darker version is something over which I have no control. That's the, 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 the color overlay, the skin that's choosing this color for me. 
show color for selected channel i'm not a big fan of that that doesn't look particularly selected to me that's just another colored track let's take that away and now it's super obvious what my track is and that brightness is now just a little bit too much for me that's a bit better okay so that's all your user interface options up in event display got a couple that matter as well let's just uh, hop out of this so event display is all about what happens in the project viewer see this um this midi part if i pick it up and start dragging it around can you see how you've got the option to have the things that are moving over um slightly visible so it's partially transparent those options are configured here how much do we want the grid lines to overlay on the top of everything that we're seeing the event handling opacity is the thing that you just saw as I was dragging MIDI parts around. And event opacity itself, I want this maximum. If I set that to anything less than maximum, then these events are going to become partially transparent. And I personally don't like that. I want to see the full colour of the tracks that I'm working with. Finally, this all ties in with my project colour setup, which I've had to amend, actually. I've had this color scheme for quite some time now and it works really well bass vocals guitar keys the the primary sections of music that i uh, work most commonly with have their own color categories so i can see where my bass track is but i can also see the group track that that bass guitar is feeding into i found when i loaded cubase 13 that everything seemed to be a bit darker than it used to be previously I don't know whether or not the skin overlay, that, that kind of the most important choice, the one that you make at the top of the tree, I think that's having more of an impact now. And so all of these tracks just looked a little bit darker. So I went into my project colors setup and I've just basically brightened all of these colors and, say, and saved myself a new default color set. So the colors are principally all the same. They're just a little bit lighter than they used to be in 12. Once you've configured all of the colors exactly how you want, then make sure to save your preset. Just click the little save button. Um, even it says Anthony Dark here because I've explicitly set a preference. But if I come out of this window and head back into preferences again, if this isn't set and you click save, how do you know what to call your preset? You need to remember what your preset's called. And obviously you don't want to select this because that's going to overwrite any changes you may have made. So when you click save, there really should be a little browser here that allows you to kind of choose one that you previously saved and overwrite it. You don't. I would have to explicitly type Anthony Dark, then say OK, and then it'll ask me if I want to overwrite that file. So that's a little bit clunky, but it's not the end of the world. I'm, I'm used to dealing with these little idiosyncrasies. And here's my light scheme which every time I jump to it, I think, oh, that looks quite good. I might try that one. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching this. Hope you enjoyed it. Please hit like if you did. I'll see you again. Thanks a lot.